Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm super excited because I have the Harry Potter collection from ColourPop. I did buy the full collection because you guys know how I roll. When it comes to ColourPop, it just makes sense for the shipping and all that stuff. But I think I should not be doing that <laughs> anymore because I am on a lip product to know by. And because of this collection, I now have eight new lip products. So yeah, I'll just quickly show you like everything and then we can go more into it. And I did check before filming, which I normally forget, but this time I checked and everything is still available. Even the full collections and even like the PR ones. So if you're like a super Harry Potter fan, you can get like the special box or whatever. Um, but I just got the full collection set. So these are the lip balms. I love the packaging. Each one has its like little house mascot. And these are kind of special because they each have a different scent. I will be reading the scent from the ColourPop site because they're all like they're like kind of complex, like they mixed a bunch of things together. Um, so I really like them. And the lip balms are from 4th Ray Beauty, which is ColourPop's like skincare sister brand kind of thing. So they're actually really good. I have been using them. I used the Slytherin one and the Hufflepuff one. And I really like them so far. So I'll just tell you the different ones. For Gryffindor, we have this special packaging, of course, and the inside. And I will be keeping the packaging of this collection because I love it. <laughs> but the inside is really cute also. And these are kind of heavy, like they feel more expensive than some other ColourPop lip products in my opinion. Um, yeah, they just feel really substantial. So the Gryffindor one and all the the lip balms look like this with the slant, but each one is the color of the house, you know. So Gryffindor, so it actually has a butterbeer scent and it's described as a frothy eggnog with notes of island rum, sweet ginger, clove, cinnamon, and aged vanilla. I love it. It smells like nice and to me, I smell the ginger and the vanilla and the cinnamon mostly, but really like this one. I actually like all of the scents, but I haven't tried that one on my lips yet, although it's going to be the same formula. Um, and the lip balms have saccharin in, in the ingredients, so if you actually like taste them, they taste sugary, so it's pretty a nice touch. This is the Slytherin one which I tried already. This one actually has a minty feel because it has, well I'll tell you the aroma. This one is Peppermint Toad, a cooling and refreshing flavor with notes of wild peppermint, garden spearmint, and hints of clove. So this one because there's mint in it, it does have like that cooling minty feel if you like that. Then we have Ravenclaw. And my camera might be doing something weird. I don't know how to fix it, so please <laughs> disregard. Here we go. Did I even show you the Slytherin one? I don't know what I'm doing right now. That's what that one looks like. This one might be my least favorite, although I still like it. It's just not like a spicy aroma that I like. This one is Sugar Quills, a luscious and fresh flavor with notes of blackberries, woodland basil, and hints of spiced vanilla bean. Okay, that one's more fruity. And then for Hufflepuff, we have this one. Yeah, this is the one I'm wearing right now. It smells very like cake battery to me. That's what it looks like in the packaging. Um, I have heard people say like the, this, whatever that's called, the decoration, I'll use that word, although that's not correct. <laughs> 
but it could wear off so I hope it doesn't because it's just really cute but the Hufflepuff one is popping pixie wing dust a fantasy flavor with notes of fluffy marshmallows vanilla bean wild coconut and juicy berries so yeah I really like I like all of them Ravenclaw not as much but yeah I'm still gonna use it of course because the formula is actually good which I am happy about so those are the lip balms then I guess we'll go to the super shock highlighters which are the cutest things ever so first we have Dobby oh my god is that not so cute so this like I said is a super shock highlighter with these, I kind of wish they had somehow put like the little character on the packaging itself because they just have like the name and like the little items that represent the character. But it would have been nice, although then it probably would have been more expensive. So <laughs> this is the shade Dobby. I haven't even swatched these, so let's do it. That's what that one looks like. Yes, that looks like a nice, you know, champagne shade that I like. Then we have Buckbeak. So cute. That's what this one looks like. So this one, I guess, is a bit deeper. Let's swatch it. Oh, that one feels like super wet almost. Oh, that one is more. That's really pretty. It kind of has a pinkness to it. Then Hedwig. So cute. So all the packaging is different on these and I already got them dirty. And there is a mirror in every compact. So that one looks like this. I think that, oh yeah, that's like a purpley blue one. Ooh, that's really icy. <laughs> I don't know about this one. But we'll have to see it on the face because normally when you apply highlighter, you don't swipe it on your face, you buff it in. So that could still be pretty. So yeah, like I said, these are super shop highlighters. So they're like usual formula. This is not a new product to ColourPop. But I think this is a new packaging for their super shop highlighters. Usually they come in like those pots, like the Super Shock eyeshadows. But I also have a compact, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to keep them like closed and as tightly as possible because they can dry out because they feel so creamy, just if you're not fami familiar with that formula. Um, then we have four eyeliners. I think this is a new product to ColourPop. These are the Graphics Ink Liners. They're Inkwell liners, so I'll show you what I mean. And of course, the packaging is different for every house on the outside. But my one complaint about this collection is that I don't understand why <laughs> the eyeliners are all the same blue color. And there's nothing on them that would tell you what shade it is. So if you don't keep the packaging and you like put all these together, you'd have to open them. Or if you remembered the name, you would have to look on the bottom. But this one is called Diadem, right? Yeah, for Ravenclaw. So an inkwell liner is when you have like a pot of ink. I don't even know if that's a 
like the actual industry term, but that's what I call it. And then you take the applicator out, you know. So that's what they look like. I haven't tried these yet, so I don't know anything about them. Um, but I'll swatch this one. So this is obviously a blue one. Oh, they're very like watery, but the pigment looks nice. That's diadem. And I think it's a felt tip brush from what I can tell. So for Gryffindor, of course we have a red, but see what I mean? It's the same packaging. So I don't know why, like for the lip balms, they went through the trouble of making them all different color, but not for the eyeliners. So, I don't know. But this one is a red shade. Oh, it's kind of like metallic. And see, then for Slytherin, we have a green. Whoa, that is a dark green. I really like that actually. So, I don't usually wear liquid liner because I'm terrible at applying it, but I'm kind of excited to have these different colored ones. I do have a like rose gold eyeliner like this from L'Oreal and I use it like to put under my lash line and I really like it so I don't know probably I'll use these in the same kind of way like as like a lower lash line or maybe like a fun like graphic situation we'll see but this one is for Hufflepuff the yellow one looks like this Oh, that's actually like a gold, like a yellowy gold. So if my camera would focus, those are the eyeliners. They actually look really nice, like not streaky at all. And I did find like with the last, when they first released these, I don't remember when, it was recently. I didn't find the promo photos were doing them justice because the swatches look kind of patchy. But yeah, these swatched really nice. So, And the blue one, like the one I first put down, is dry now. Oh yeah, that's not moving. Look at this. Okay, these might be fun. So we'll have to see about the eyeliners, but so far so good. Then we have four lip products, but three of them are Lux Velvet Liquid Lipsticks. I don't think I own that formula from ColourPop and I don't know if it's new. I feel like it might be because I know they have Lux Gloss and they're they have like cream, cream liquid lipsticks, I don't know. But these are called Lux Velvet Liquid Lipstick. At least these three are. So they're all named after the characters. This one is H. Potter, H. Granger, and R. Weasley, of course. So cute. Love the illustration of this collection too. So for R. Weasley, we have this nice red color. It's like a reddish orange, I guess, to like represent his hair. Um, yeah, so let's open this. Okay, this looks like a very moussey formula. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've never tried these before. Watch me like have like eight of them already and I didn't know, but <laughs> that's the color. I really like that color. That's nice like fall, like orangey red. Then for Hermione, oh God. I don't want to break the packaging because I need to save it. We have a nice nude shade, a 
pinky nude it looks like and each cap has like a different item to represent the character which is a nice touch these feel like very thin there's some Hermione well the H Granger shade this collection must have cost Colourpop a lot of money <laughs> to pay for the um, trademarks because everything has like a TM on it like even the shades and the palette which you'll see so yeah it's probably why it's more expensive than others this is the H Potter one it's a nice like deep red that's a nice another nice shade for fall I already kind of like how these swatch like they're very like even in pigmentation um, the other day I was trying, well, retrying my Hocus Pocus one from last year, um, and those are cream. Actually, let me just get it, because I don't know anything about Colourpop names. This one, the Winifred one, um, these are, yeah, Fresh Kiss Lip Cream. So these ones don't dry down. And the problem is, when you have a really deep color, you kind of don't want that because it goes everywhere. And these are also very moussey. But I guess the difference between these and the Lux Velvet Liquid Lipstick is the liquid lipstick's gonna dry down. I don't know, they, look, they still look pretty shiny to me. Yeah, but this color, Anyway, this is a total tangent, but this was very streaky and because I had to like keep applying more to get it even, it just kept going everywhere. Anyway, so that's my complaint with those ones. So we'll see if I prefer this formula, but I also don't like something that dries up my lips, obviously. No one likes that, so we'll have to see. But anyway. Yeah, so those were the three liquid lipsticks. And then I love this because the L Love Good one, look how cute. They made this one a luxe gloss, and that is so fitting for this representing Luna Love Good, if you guys know. I mean, would you be watching this video if you didn't know Harry Potter? I don't know. But look, this is so Luna Love Good, right? As nice, like, sparkly, like, holographic or iridescent lip gloss. Let me see. Ooh, it smells good, too. Try and swatch this somewhere. See? There's, like, a nice shift on it. So I really love that they did one gloss and the rest liquid lipstick. Because you could... Of course, wear this on top of the other ones too, if you wanted to. Yeah, I really just liked that they did that. So, I'm also happy with those. Then finally, we have the eyeshadow palette, which is beautiful. I love the packaging. It has a nice, like, soft touch feel. And you actually take the this thing off. I forget the name of it. And even the inside has like a pattern for the houses. I love it. So this palette is called Back to Har Back to Hogwarts. It looks like that. I think if you want to get anything in this collection, you should probably get this because it just feels like really nice and like a collector's item. So I'll show you the inside. And this is heavy. I think heavier than any other ColourPop palette. So that's what it looks like inside. And then these are the shades. It's actually huge and hard to show you. <laughs> but I had a plastic thing on there. So it's actually the Marauder's Map. If you can see that in the background. And I think this looks beautiful. I love these you know, dirty yellow shades <laughs> that I call them. I love the reds and the warm tones. And then you also have some color. You have blue and green. 
Yeah, I'm really excited about this actually. And I went to show this to Josh and even he was like, whoa, this is heavy. He's like, how much was this? <laughs> like he, even he was like, thought, wow, this must be expensive because it feels really nice. You know what I mean? So I'm very happy with this. Uh, I'm hoping it's a good formula. I mean, I've never not, I've never had an issue with my ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. I only buy the collabs or like, well, that's not true because I just bought the, in the summer, I bought the Shell collection and the Secret Admirer collection last year for Valentine's, but I don't know. Yeah, I've never had a complaint with ColourPop eyeshadows. Um, I will say, I think there is a pressed glitter here. The shade Forbidden Forest. Um, but let's do some swatches, right? This is probably a long video. <laughs> do I even need to say that anymore? I feel like all my videos are long. And I'm keeping these swatches on because I want to see if these dry down. Because so far, they haven't. Okay. I guess I'll go in like rows. And I have to say also, I love when palettes do this where like each row makes sense as a look. That is very helpful for me because, you know, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not that creative with my makeup. So it helps me to have like a vision like that. I really like that. I'm just going to swatch a few because I can't fit these anywhere where I will be able to show you them properly. Let's just swatch some fun shades so well I have to swatch this one invisibility cloak because it's like a fun marbly shade I think it's a super shock um, formula maybe my hands gonna be the best Ooh, that's pretty that felt like super smooth it has like gold shimmer in it if you can see that very pretty I have to touch this pressed glitter. Yeah, that's a pressed glitter. But it has like those thick like confetti glitters. I'm scared. This is not something I would put on my eye. And I don't really recommend that you do either because I can see that going into your eye. Like see this big strand of this here it has those in it so if that gets in your eye i don't i don't know i'm pretty sure they'll it's gonna say somewhere like don't put this on your eye yeah so that is the shade forbidden forest so on the back there's the shade names and ones like with stars they say on the bottom here, not safe for use in the immediate eye area. So, yeah. And the one next to it, Ravenclaw. Okay, that's just very spark. Whoa. <laughs> I was not expecting that. That is a matte with shimmer, but like tons and tons of shimmer. So I think this will be the kind that you actually actually see the shimmer on your eye which is nice that is a really nice like teal blue i also want to swatch the jillyweed shade i believe that's also a super shock because it looks stunning as a nice green shift okay so this is fun and i really like the mattes because they're nice like transition shades and there's some lighter and deeper ones and there's cool and warm tones so so far i'm excited but we'll have to see how it performs on the eye but there's some random <laughs> swatches that i could fit on my hand yeah and that glitters now okay so i think now that i showed you everything we can do a demo um i already have my base on of course because there's no base products 
in this collection so i think we can just get started and i'll change my battery because it's about to die okay so i removed the eyeshadow swatches but not these but i think i will because they're not drying down as you can see like i rub my finger on them so i don't really know what the difference is between these and the lip creams if you if you know let us know below but i will have to you know actually try them on my lips to see what the difference is and those eyeliners like okay they come off easily with a makeup wipe but when I was touching them with my fingers, they were not coming off. So that is a good sign. So I want to try on one of the highlighters. Um, actually, maybe I should do my eyes first. Okay, because for eyes, I kind of know what I want to do. I want to do like a reddish warm look because I haven't done that in a while. So I'm not going to use the Hedwig shade because it's like a purple blue highlighter. Um... I think I'm going to use Dobby because it's the most like neutral shade. Yeah, it's like a, the champagne gold one. I think I'll do that. So, uh, I can't remember now. I think I applied the Super Shock highlighters with a fan brush before and it worked out. So let's try that again. Oh yeah, that is really pretty. I should probably zoom you in a bit. Something went in my eye, of course. But let's just keep going. <laughs> yes, that is a really pretty, like, you know, basic highlighter shade for me. I already know I like the formula of these because I tried them in the Winnie the Pooh collection, so I'm not surprised. They're nice and smooth on the skin because they're, like I said, very... They're almost like a cream, so they, they work really nice on dry skin, which is what I have. <laughs> yes, I like that a lot. And I'm just swirling my brush like in the whole pan to just pick up like everything. Okay, so that's how that looks. I mean, the sun's kind of very bright today, so I don't know how well you can see it, but I think it looks pretty good so far. So that was the Dobby highlighter, Super Shock highlighter. I think we're just gonna move right onto the palette. Like I said, I want to do like a warm red kind of look. And I kind of want to play with the gold eyeliner. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, I didn't put my Urban Decay Primer Potion. So I'll do that now as well. I think what I want to do first is go in with the shade Hufflepuff. Um, to set my lid, although this is a deeper shade than I would normally do this with. But because I'm going to do like reds, I don't think it, it matters. So I'll start with this. Yeah, it's very like yellow beige, this shade. But I kind of just want to put something down to start. And that pretty much is the lightest shade in the palette, so... Um, it's still very yellow, as you can see, but that's fine. So I'm going to do just one eye to save time, because this is already long. For my crease, I think I'm going to go in with Whomping Willow, this shade here. I'm kind of like doing these two rows, basically. That's very dusty. So I'm kind of focusing that more in the actual crease. Okay, I like that so far. And then I'm going to take a smaller brush 
and go in with the shade Mandrake. This deeper brownish red and that's just gonna focus on the outer corner. But I think I'm gonna go in with the more red shade after. I'm kind of just putting this down to like start a base, you know? And I'm not picking up a ton of that on my brush. Okay, I like this. I mean, these are just, <laughs> you know, basic shades that you would find in most palettes, but I like them for starting off. So what I'm gonna do for my shimmer, so I kind of want to use Butterbeer and Invisibility Cloak. So this palette's huge. <laughs> this one and this one. I think I'm gonna put Butterbeer down all over the lid. Okay, it seems to be picking up with the brush pretty good. But let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going on, but not as like shiny as I thought it would. So I might have to use my finger with this shade. It does feel like a super shock shade again. I'm sure I could find that out somewhere, <laughs> but I'm trying not to film this video for several hours just researching. But that's what that shade looks like. That is a nice like coppery. But I do want to deepen up the corner with the shade Gryffindor, which is like a nice red. This one here. Like a burgundy, I guess. Because I wanted this to be more red than like bronze, if you know what I mean. And then I'm going back in with Mandrake, which is like that like deeper brown yeah so I don't know if I had to do the Hufflepuff shade down first because I'm pretty much covering that entirely but let's try and bring some of that back in it would help if I cleaned my brushes so just with Hufflepuff again just kind of like you know, cleaning that up on the edges here. And then I'm going to go in with Invisibility Cloak, which is that like fun marbly shade. And I'm going to tap that on top. I think this will do what I want it to do. I think you can see that. It has a really nice sparkle to it. I think that's what I meant to do. I don't know. I thought it would turn out more red, but I think that Gryffindor shade is more like a burgundy. So yeah, but that's fine. Um, I think for the lower lash line, I'm going to take some of Whomping Willow, which was that first transition shade I went in with, just on the, you can't even see what I'm doing, can you? On the lower lash line. And a touch of Gryffindor Burgundy. Just on the outer corner. I normally wouldn't do this with a big brush like this, but um, my brushes need to be cleaned. Okay, yes, okay, now I think I'm getting what I want. And then for the inner corner, I want to go in with the shade Floating Candles. This like champagne yellow shade looks really pretty. I think that's a super shock formula because it feels like super creamy. Oh yeah. want to bring some 
brightness and I'm kind of bringing that down to blend with the lower lash line shades and the rest I'll put on my brow bone okay so I think that's all I want to do for the eyes so far but I want to play with the eyeliner like I said so hopefully this doesn't ruin everything <laughs> but I have an idea maybe I should shake these I don't know, it doesn't say, does it? Oh yeah, it does. Shake me before you get creative in just one spot. Okay, so I want to do like a line here with this. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm not a professional. <laughs> um, but I think that's what I want to do. Just like that. I think you can see that. I probably should have went higher because my, you know, brow bone is gonna cover some of it. But yeah, that looks cool. I don't know. Did I mess that up? Probably. And what if I put some on my lower lash line too? Like right here. Okay, I think I like that. I definitely feel like I messed up the top. <laughs> but whatever. I think you have to let these dry before you like move at all. Because they're very like watery. So maybe if you have hooded eyes don't put them in your crease like I did but yeah I think I'm okay with how this is looking I feel like you're not really seeing the true color but let me try and <laughs> recreate this on the other eye and I'll be back okay I'm back um I don't know what happened <laughs> with that eyeliner but it did not go as planned i thought i would be able to draw like a opaque line with it but it's kind of like too watery and if you try and make it go back on itself it just removes itself i don't know if that's picking up on camera but yeah so just ignore <laughs> that although i guess it looks kind of cool and like planned out um i like it on the lower lash line but it kind of just looks like a swirl of gold so i don't know that's that's my look um i also did my mascara and brows off camera and i did my um charlotte tilbury pillow talk in dream pop on the lower lash line which is like a how do they describe this a berry brown so i thought that would look cool but anyway and then i was thinking oh i forgot to put blush on because there's no blush in this collection so i'm wondering what it would look like if i used the buck beak super shock highlighter as a blush i'm probably gonna like get super glowy but let's see i have this duo fiber brush because this one had like that pink undertone i just want to see if it does anything <laughs> probably not because it's not like the best brush for picking up the super shock formula i don't know did that do anything i think it just made me more glowy i just wanted to see what that would do so for the lips like i said i had already put on the hufflepuff lip balm earlier but let's see now which of these is gonna look the best with my look so this is the r weasley shade the hermione shade which is that nice nude 
it's probably gonna be that one to be honest because I'm not sure how I feel about red eyes and lips <laughs> but although I mean it could be a look let's do let's be adventurous and I'll do the R Weasley um, and let's see how this goes. I do like that it's a thin doe foot like this because then you have more room, you know, not more room, more precision. Yeah, these are very moussey and like thin. Probably should have used a lip liner. Oh, but I like this. I like this like blurred matte look. Okay, I actually really like this shade and I think it goes really well with my eyes. So yeah, I don't think these dry down. I think they're, the formula is thinner than the lip creams, but yeah, nice pigmentation. I like the matte, like the soft matte kind of look. I just don't know how long it would last, but I really like the color of that. I'm not going to put the lip gloss over it because that's totally not the vibe today because that had like blue and like purple, I think, shimmers in it. Oh, it looked really pretty. I just don't think it would go with my look. So I think I'm gonna stop there and not do anything I might regret. <laughs> so is that it? Yeah, I went over everything. Oh, I just need to do my setting spray. I'm using the Half Magic Dew Lock, although I don't really need any more. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to play with the eyeliners more and figure out how I'm supposed to use it because yeah, that didn't really work out for me. I don't know if you can even see what I mean. See how there's like a gap? in it that's where i tried to go back over it i just filmed the whole clip and i wasn't recording so i don't even know where i was i was trying to show you that the eyeliner like when i tried to go back over it to make it more opaque it didn't work like it just lifted itself so i'm a little concerned about those i haven't seen anyone else review them so i'll have to see if that's like a known thing or i just didn't use it properly or something because I'm really excited about the deeper shades but now I'm worried like if they do that that's gonna look pretty bad because the only way this one could be saved was the fact that it's like a light gold that you can't really tell I messed up too bad <laughs> maybe you can on camera I'll find out later when I'm editing but yeah I'm really excited about all of this I love all the shades I love the lip balms um, I already knew I loved Super Shock Highlighter Formula. The palette feels very nice and like a collector's item. So I'm excited to play around with this some more. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!